Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. You're watching Learn Tech with Sandeep, and in this today's session, we are going to learn about the most common coding licenses. Let's get started. Now, first, let's understand what are these coding licenses. Now, these coding licenses, often considering or referred as software licenses or open source licenses, are legal agreements that dictate how software can be used, modified, or distributed. Now let's understand the purpose of these legal licenses. Okay. Now licenses help protect the intellectual property of developers. They specify what users can and cannot do with the softwares. For instance, some licenses allow users to modify the software and distribute the modification while other licenses does not allow that. So these licenses are crucial. Uh, in the world of software development because they define the right of the developer, the user and sometimes even third parties. Now let's understand what are the type of these licenses. Now practically there are multiple types but in case of our use case specific there is two kind of these licenses. First one is this property license. Now what are these property licenses? These licenses are used for commercial purpose only and they usually restrict the user ability to modify or distribute the software. For example, Microsoft Windows or Adobe Photoshop. Now, another type of license is the open source license, which is with the most interested in, right? Now, these licenses allow users to view the source code, to modify it and often distribute it. However, they can have various degree of freedom and obligation as per the license agreement. Now let's deep dive more into this open source licenses. Now there are total eight most popular licenses that is open source. Now let's go and explore one by one. First one, MIT license. So this MIT license is a permissive free software license originating at Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the late 1980s. And it's permissive license that allow for reuse in any project, even proprietary ones. The, so for what, what it means? What it means is that suppose you are working in a proprietary or private project or an enterprise project and you are going to use open source project that has this MIT license and you're completely allowed. So you can use a free open source project and all these codes to use in a commercial project without any problem. Only requirement is to include the original copyright and the license notice in any copy of software. So Suppose you're developing any application, you just have to include the original code license into that code. Just that's, that's the only requirement. And what are the most popular example of this MIT license are jQuery, Ruby on Rails, Node.js, React and TypeScript. Now let's learn about the second open source license that is GNU General Public License or in short GPL what it is. So it ensures that any derivative work will also be open source. It often described as the copyleft license. There are different version of GPL and the most this one is the version GPL version 3. Now, if you see the very right corner, you see I've explained, I've added a short note. So what it is. So copyleft is a term used in the realm of open source licensing to describe a license strategy designed to ensure that software remains free and open. The term is a play on the word copyright and of course it represents the opposite of the intention. It's opposite of the copyright. Okay. Now it's just making sure it's free and it's available for everyone and stay open source. Okay. Now the third one, the third one is a GNU Lesser General Public License or LGPL. What it is? So it's similar to GPL. Okay. But with exception that it has to be linked with non-free software, for example, Qt, OpenGL, GLab, Mono. Okay. Now the fourth one that is Apache License 2.0. It's a permissive license that also provides an express grant of patent right from the contributor to the user. So whoever the owner or the code writer, it's allowing the users to use for editing, viewing, sharing, all, all the permissions, okay? For example, Apache HTTP Server, Kafka, Hadoop, Cassandra, TensorFlow, Elasticsearch, etc. Okay? The fifth one, this is the BSD licenses or Berkeley Software Distribution. So there are multiple version of these BSD licenses, uh, but they are all permissive license, similar to the MIT license. Uh, the most common are the two clause and three clause, uh, and there is exactly new and revised licenses. For example, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, OpenSSH, Redis, OpenCV, and there are 
many such more example out there now the sixth license is the morzilla public license 2.0 or mpl now Oh, it's a weak copyleft license that allow integration into proprietary software as long as the files covered are the MPL and remain open source. For example, Mozilla Firefox, Rust, KaiOS, PDFJS, and Nunchucks. And there are many such examples again out there available. Now, the seventh one, that is GNU Afreo General Public License or in short, AGPL. What it is, it is similar to the GPL, but it also covers over, use over the network, making it suitable for the web application. For example, Nextcloud, Meston, PeerTube, MongoDB till version 3.6, ERP Next are the example of this license. The eighth and final one is the Eclipse Public License, which is EPL. Now, it's an open source license used by many projects at the Eclipse Foundation only. Okay, for example, Eclipse ID and other Eclipse tools. Now, let's understand few important terms for all this licensing. First one is the copyright. So what is copyright? So when software is written, it's automatically protected by copyright as soon as it's saved to a tangible medium like hard drive. And this means that the author or the creator of the software has exclusive right to reproduce, distribute, perform and display the software. Okay. Now, second one is the software license. So this is a legal instrument allowing others to use, modify and or distribute software and without a license, this action would violate the copyright law. The license specifies the terms and condition under the software can be used. So if I'm the code writer, I'm going to allow other people to use my code, other people to share my code, they have to license. Now it can be completely open source so anybody can use it, it can be protected so that only the people who pay me or have some agreements, they can only use it. So these are the terms and conditions that you have written in the licenses. Okay. Then the freeware. Now this is a software that is available for use at no monetary cost at all, like a free software. However, the freeware doesn't mean that it's a software is an open source. Okay. So even though you're using some tools and you know uh, software services, and that's completely free of cost or free of like they don't have to pay anything. But it doesn't mean it's open source software, okay? And the sub licensing. Now, this allow the licensee to grant some or all of their rights regarding to the software to a third party, okay? Now, not all licenses allow the sub licensing. For instance, the GPL does not allow li sub licensing per se, but any recipient of the software source code under the GPL gets their own license directly from the original licensor allowing them to redistribute under the same term. So that's it. I hope you like this video. You understand the important uh, software licenses. So if you like this video, please give a like, share this video with others and please subscribe if you're not already. See you again in some other session. Bye-bye.